in the pursuit for more mecha goodness, I decided to plunge into Gundam for real. Kido Butoden G Gundam, or widely known G Gundam, which I have thoroughly enjoyed, ended up as my entrance to the franchise. While I presume the show was known for its hot-blooded, emotion-overpouring characters and being THE Gundam that splits the franchise's universe, I find myself rather appreciative and even admire towards the directing exercised throughout the hefty 49 episodes. In order for me to discuss them, footages of spoiling the story's biggest turning point must be used. So spoilers warning to those who are careful. And with that, these are three tricks, more or less, that have left an impression on me. Gundam Fighto! Ready? Go! The first one is not something exclusively used in G Gundam, but a fairly common transition practice. However, I find its effective usage to be one huge contributor towards the hot-blooded nature of G Gundam. To start off simple, an object in the current shot will be used to swipe over the screen, serving as a transition. Adding on to that would be something like a scene focusing on the character on screen or an interactable item, and then using either subjects as focal point to cut into a different location while pertaining the matter in discuss. Sometimes even bouncing off dialogues between different parties who are involved in the exact same exposition. <laughs> Even more masterfully done is when the exchange ends with both sides coincide simultaneously right at the doorstep of the event built upon by the exposition. Any of the above variances make for interesting and fun cinematography, and they are generously performed throughout G Gundam. Not only they keep the exposition-heavy scenes a distinct pacing, but they are also great for keeping the narrative going without breaking the momentum and emotions generated by the dialogues, carrying the energy built up from previous cuts all together to the main event. What the trick provides is not just a clever continuation of transitions, but it also lessens the need for re-acceleration when the anticipated event they are setting up for the audience finally arrive. What we get are lengthy expositions as the precursor of the event, done so where everyone talks over the same topic in a different space, but they are actually interconnected by time. As the dialogues advance, so do time, their locations and actions. Everything is in motion. And by the time the talking ends, BAM! The main course is served on the table, without any extra hiccups and delays. With further techniques added into the formula like how to insert or retrieve characters to and fro the frame, the seamlessness can be further enhanced. If you're going to watch the show for the first time, keep an eye out for this neat little trick. And for those who have watched it, this trick is best exemplified on these episodes and timeframes I've put up on screen. And yes, the momentum they were able to maintain could span so long in some cases that I cannot show you the entirety of them without getting myself into copyright troubles. My highly edited footages will not do them justice, so go check them out and have a throwback if you will. There's this one scene where Domon and Master Asia were trapped underground in a forsaken city, trying to escape. What's worse is the water current that is sinking the city, limiting their time and path. While finding an exit, they reminisce about their training in the past and a special technique Master Asia has yet to pass on to Domon. Alas, the sentimental moment has to be cut short as they reach a dead end filled with rubble and the water has finally caught up to their location from behind. In the midst of urgency, both fighters decided to combine their strength to break through the rubble. We have this sequence where the approaching wave gets a close-up, cut into the fighters getting into their stances, and behind them the wave coming fierce, and then a split screen on their expressions followed by another simple cut into a zoom out of this still image seen here. They unleash their strengths with a passionate roar, breaching out the pinch moment in a bombastic fashion. Right after the hype, some devil Gundam heads appear, and the fighters summon their Gundam to fend them off. 
Domon then performs the special technique to eliminate the enemies. The final lesson by Master Asia for his pupil has finally come to an end. The entire sequence is yet another example where the first trick we discussed has been showcased wonderfully. A build-up that is reminiscing of the past, leading into confrontation, and then climax with a new ability acquired all in one smooth delivery. But the genius within this sequence I want to talk about here is this. What makes this entire scene absolutely amazing is the turning of the meaning of a current object or an event upside down while keeping the relevancy of it within the scene. With just a snap of a finger, an impending doom immediately gets flipped around and becomes the backdrop of a celebratory shot, turning the biggest threat looming behind our heads the entire way up until this point into a mere assisting element to our hero's glorious moment. Not only did the complete significant swing of the water from negative to positive is beautifully altered, it doubles down as an iconography appropriate for our martial artists here, reminiscing of waves crashing against cliffs. This connection will not be possible if not for the choice of using water as the threat. Imagine if fire was used instead, caused by gas leaks or explosives. It could turn into an explosion finish, but that wouldn't connect with the martial artist motif as strongly. Leave the explosions for Hollywood. The intention of using water here truly showcased the thoughtfulness of the screenwriters, trying to craft impactful moments. Truly, a remarkable scene. I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. This is a small one, yet the effectiveness pays off really well. In a year-long running show like G Gundam, it is common to have a more rigid episode structure for the ongoing narrative. For example, if the story of the show revolves around a main group of characters, you will see episodes dedicated to each of their introductions back to back to back, and later on, another batch of episodes for wrapping up their character arcs. If it is the tournament arc, each match will get a set amount of episodes for them to resolve, and altogether, they occupy most of the content of the entire series. G Gundam revels into its energetic spirit so much that the audience could easily be carried away by its high-octane joyride to the point where they could unintentionally disregard the central theme of the show. This itself, of course, doesn't mean the show has done bad. After all, it is the direction they decided to focus on, evidently so, true and true. But when it is time for the theme sitting in the bench to be called to attention, they perform a simple little trick to remind us about it. In the final Gundam fight with Master Asia, he reveals his ultimate goal loud and clear to Domon, that is, the elimination of humankind for the sake of planet Earth. As the previous Gundam Fight Tournament champion, he realized the destructions brought by the tournament that dictates the ruler of space is responsible for the downfall of Earth's well-being. This quote-unquote ideal war has tunnel vision everyone's attention to the point of complete negligence towards the health of the planet they once belonged in. Hence, in order to rejuvenate the Earth once again, he has come to a conclusion that humankind should atone by disappearing from the soil entirely. Now that's a villain. When Master delivers his grand speech, there's this part where the images of deteriorating cities flash before our eyes, and we are quickly to be reminded that these are background arts that have been used way earlier in the first act of the story, when Domon was battling the other fighters in their respective country. As these images simply trigger within our minds, they also remind us that we have been missing a crucial narrative drive under our nose. To achieve this, the backgrounds mentioned have to be memorable enough to leave an impression on us. They have to be seared into our brains. 
having popular monuments that represent the capital city of the countries literally banned in disgrace, sends the point across in a direct yet visually stimulating way. One of them was even directly involved in a proper Gundam fight. Funnily enough, the very first episode had already set up this exact little commentary as well. Having an inspector in Rome detesting the Gundam fight tournament for the same reason as Master Asia. From there on, the topic was hardly ever being picked up again until Master reveals his final surprise. When Master Asia proudly lectures Domon about his ignorance, boy do I feel ashamed for not picking up the underlying meaning of the whole thing. Despite in retrospect, a lot of hints were dropped subtly, laying the foundation. But at the same time, I was also ecstatic by the effectiveness from such tricky use of those memorable imageries. When it is time for the theme to finally matter, the show cleverly digs up a few images resting dormant in our mind for an in-your-face reminder, not dissimilar with the loud and proud attitude the show dons. The moment of realization itself is memorable thanks to this ingenious little trick. So do not let the passionate characters and their hearty deliveries take over all your senses. Take note of the compositions, and you'll notice the show still contains some well put together storyboards. To let that over the top, headstrong appearance it was known for to shine as bright as possible. Without that, G Gundam wouldn't be legendary in my opinion. If you have at least find this video interesting, consider supporting my channel by subscribing. Share it around the internet if you think it's worthy, and comment down below on what you think about G Gundam. I'm actually curious whether you prefer the design of Shining Gundam or God Gundam, but I would like us to agree the Holland one, Nether Gundam, is one of the best design in the entire Gundam franchise. This video along with many others were pre-made and scheduled as an attempt for me to kickstart this channel by playing the algorithm game as best as I could, so you will see uploads in the coming weeks. If you want more right away, feel free to browse my previous uploads, or jump over to my video game analysis channel for a few hours of game specific deep dives. And you can follow me on Twitter at MoonAnime9 for random anime thoughts and discussions. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you from the moon. Jikai on Moon Anime.